Alfonso, uh, obviously this period in your life affected who you are as a person. How did this period in your life affect you as an artist? Well, I guess that every period in your life affects you as, as an artist, as any other thing. Uh, but definitely after this period of my life, I became, it was a period of, uh, that I was very uh, uh, kind of, uh, a, uh, what's the word? Well, I was very lonely. Mm -hmm. I retreated. I didn't really have much, many friends. And, and yes, it informed a lot in my life because my refuge was going to the movies. Hmm. You know, my refuge was cinema. When you are thinking about this period in your life, you have your memories, you have your assumptions about your memories, and then you have the things that you don't know that start to change your memories. When you're revisiting this period in your life, what surprised you most about what you didn't remember as well as you thought you might have or you didn't know that you wish you had? No, what is amazing is, is how once that you access one memory, is opening this door that leads into this corridor, endless corridor with doors. And, and each door is another memory. And then you keep on just opening memories. What I was surprised is how it was like a, a chain reaction in which just accessing one memory and more memories start coming out. And then contrasting those memories with, the, or my sister, with Libo, uh, who's a real person, who's the character of Cleo is, Upon, based upon, then it would inform more, or with Eugenio looking for locations and finding and saying, oh, Eugenio, that's the tile. Mm. And that tile immediately opening like 50 doors, you know? So it's, uh, it's it, memory is funny like that. <laughs> and, and by the way, who knows if those are real memories? Right. We'll never know. <laughs> right. Eugenio, you're charged with recreating something that Alfonso knows very well, and he's very specific in what those things have to be in terms of furniture, in terms of tile. How much of your job was digging into Alfonso's memory, and how much of it was trying to find those things in real life so that they matched his memory? Well, it was a combination of things. First of all, it started with... Um, with a lot of descriptions, a lot of chats that Alfonso and, and me had. Uh, uh, he was uh, telling very specific, uh, specifically certain things that he remembered. How was the house, for example, or how was certain street, or what would the family would do in a certain period, you know, like uh, probably having dinner, or what would they eat. And, um, but that, for me, it was a, a, a great starting point. We basically dig into some real furniture of the Cuaron's family. We basically, it was all dispersed. How you say that? Like the it furniture was, diaspora throughout yes. Mexico, right? Yes. <laughs> so basically, we, we, we took some of it. We recreate some of them. Uh, but also, we did um, uh, historical research. We, we wanted to be very specific and accurate about that. So that was also another, uh, that also opened that door of my own memory as well. You know, I grew up um, in the same neighborhood that Alfonso some years later, so so he was uh, <laughs> a lot of years later. <laughs> but uh, no, <laughs> not that many, but, uh, but uh, what, but really, um, there, there was a lot of a big emotional connection to all of these things. So then we started to look for the city that we wanted to recreate, um, a city that we found after we started uh, scouting and, and uh, that, that it was lost. So we had to really recreate a lot of the things that you see in the, sc in the screen, building big sets uh, of the main streets and completing it digitally, yes. Gabriela, you're not just revisiting <coughs> Alfonso's personal history, you're revisiting a part of Mexico's history and what's happening with the Institutional Revolution or Re Revolutionary Party, or PRI at the time. How important was it to Alfonso that you're not just getting his history right, but you're getting Mexican history right and what's happening with students and protests and massacres at this, at this time in Mexican history? Um, well, uh it was it was very important as Eugenio was saying 
just now about recreating everything in an archaeological sort of process that really was the way we did this. We had a very long uh, pre-production uh, where we spent a lot of the time doing tons of research in order to accurately um, be able to portray the scenes that you see in the film. And um, I, I'm not Mexican, I'm Venezuelan, and I'm much, much younger than the two of them. <laughs> And so I did not live that time period in Mexico. Um, but w through that research, we were all informed of how to accurately uh, represent those events. And also, um, as you see in the film, there's a lot of uh, a political context all around. And that was very present during that time in Mexico City. So Alfonso was adamant that he wanted that represented there. So in this effort of not only digging into Alfonso's memories, we also dug into sort of those important Mexico City um, moments to capture them in the film. Skip, I want to ask you about one scene in particular, and that's the scene in the ocean. Uh, the sound design for that scene. I mean, this is a film without any score. So there's no score in this film. <laughs> that your sound design is the score, but I want to ask particular about that scene because the sound of that scene is phenomenal. Could you talk about your conversations with Alfonso and what your orders were and how you ended up fulfilling those orders with the sound design that you came up with? Well, um, in, in essence, we had the same charge to try to uh, recreate a memory and a history, um, which I happen to be familiar with myself. I think I'm a little older than you, but <laughs> maybe a few days. But I had a similar situation in, in my own childhood, and the ocean was a big thing in my childhood. And so I kind of uh, I cheated a bit, because I rather than t cue into Alfonso's memories, I had my own. And they were, luckily, they were similar. So Alfonso said from the very beginning, what we want to do is create a, something like we did in Gravity, where we want these sounds to be surreal and super real and go beyond uh, just uh, what's being represented. Well, of course, what was being represented it was kept changing, but it was it got more and more uh, ominous and, and terrifying, and that was our main goal, was to bridge reality and the memory of that, our own personal memory of what, what it's like to drown in the ocean and or what it might be like. And then the, the heightened reality of what we're seeing on film, which helps the audience, gives the audience access to what this situation could be. Marina, one of the things that Alfonso did on this film is he shot absolutely in sequence, chronologically, and that he protected the script so that the actors didn't know what they would be doing till the day of a particular scene. Nor the crew. Nor the crew. So what does that create for you as an actor when you don't know what's going to happen to your character in a given day? And can you think of a scene where you as a performer are almost in real time living the life of the character that you're almost experiencing it as the cameras are filming it? Yes, um, well, that's the way we did it. Um, and I think it was really a really beautiful uh, gift for an actor because it, it really helped us to live the experience as a real life experience. Um, we would know every day what would happen to our characters and we will be um, understanding the journey of all the family day by day. And I think this really helped not to be anticipating anything, not to be preconceiving and just like surrender to, to the story, to the characters and to the world that was being there. We, we, we really immersed in a real life experience. Jalitza, there would be no movie that we just saw without you. And I suspect Alfonso has told you that, right? <laughs> I want to ask you about Lebo and about meeting with her and her story and finding from her what you thought was important as an actor, even though you've never acted before this film. 
What was Lebo telling you and what were you taking away from your conversations with her so that you could honor who she was as an actor? Bueno, afortunadamente tuve la dicha de platicar con ella antes de empezar con la película. Uh, en esta reunión me habló sobre su historia, eh, cómo salió de su comunidad, cómo llegó a la ciudad, eh, cuál era la relación que tenía con la familia y los problemas por los que atravesó uh, en tantos económicos y todo en su pasado. Esto me identificó un poco con ella. Igual el darme cuenta que es una mujer con un corazón enorme y una bondad que desde que la ves te das cuenta. Y en un principio me provocó como ese temor de, de no poder representar a una gran mujer, de no hacerle este honor. Y, y después las palabras que ella me daba en esta plática como tranquilizándome, pues fue lo que igual me convenció de, de entregar mi corazón en esta película, al igual que ella ha dado su corazón a su familia. Fortunately, I was able to talk to her before we started shooting the film. And she told me lots of things about her own story, her history, like when she left her own community, when she arrived to the city, the relationship she had with the family, the problems she went through. These were economic problems as well as others. And all these, she said, I identified with. And I also realized the minute I saw her, how big her heart was and how kind she was. That was immediate. Immediately you knew. And I was worried not to be able to honor her enough with my performance. But she was very kind, and the words she told me were the ones that gave me peace of mind, and actually the ones that convinced me to then go out there and pour out my own heart in this film as she poured out her heart with this family. Alfonso, what were you looking for, and why was Jalitza the perfect person? Well, I was looking for, for Libo. <laughs> the, uh, uh, I, was, uh, I was looking for, well, it was the, the, the case for all the actors, and that was a challenge for the casting director. It was, they need to find actors that would be as look-alike as possible to the original people, but also to feel the same as the original people, the same sensibility. And it was months and months of casting until, uh, and then we have uh, armies of casting crews uh, through the different states in Mexico, particularly the southern states, because uh, Libu is from Oaxaca. And in one, in one town in, in Oaxaca, in one village called uh, Tlajiaco, uh, is where we were so fortunate to meet to meet with Jalitz and, you know, when I saw the, the video, the thing is, I was so used to start seeing people that look alike, but they didn't feel like. And there was something immediately that there was, I think had to do with her smile. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and yeah, I mean, and, and I immediately wanted to meet with her. Uh, and we asked her if she could come to Mexico City when she walked into the, into the place and started talking to her, because we were, it was just like weeks before we started shooting, and I was anxious that I was not finding Cleo. I felt, in one hand, so excited and relieved that I had found Cleo, and then terrified that would, she would say that she was not interested, as she was not. Alfonso, thank you so much. 